All right, it is four o'clock and it uh, looks as if we have a quorum, so we'll call the June 14th Architecture Review Board to order. Uh, Steve, if you could run us through the roll call, please. Sure, Joel Clark. Here. Marcus Sabalga. Present. Jerry Jones. Here. Richard Lindy. Here. Pam Langan. Here. Robert Heimerl indicated he was gonna miss the meeting, and Charlie Wig. Charlie Wig. Okay. All right, All we right. have a quorum. Great, thank you very much. Uh, in that case, we'll move to item 1.2, the Pledge of Allegiance. If everyone would please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item 1.3 is to identify any potential conflicts of interest. Hearing none, I'll move to item 2.1, approval from the minutes back from May 10th. Everyone had a chance to review those? Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, let's do this one as a, do we need to call it or just do a voice? Uh, just do a voice one. Right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, minutes are approved, thank you. Uh, item 3.1 is the proposed construction of a new JMKAC Art Preserve storage building down at 3636 Lower Falls Road. If the applicants could come to the podium and uh, give us a brief introduction to what your project is looking to do. Sure. Um, I'm Sam Leroy with Quashes. Um, basically what we look to do here is a 60 by 60 metal building. Um, it's going to be pushed back to the far north side of the property. Um, you're seeing on the screen there, that's the elevations, uh, colored elevations, footprint, and there's the site plan showing the uh, location of the building, um, kind of where it sits. Uh, you can see there, it's quite a ways back on the property and it's kind of tucked in there and that's to obviously shield it from the road and kind of provide a natural barrier um, to the building. Um, it's 60 by 60 uh, with a 20 foot eave height. Um, the materials on the outside of the building, uh, well, if we can scroll back to the colored, there it is. Um, basically we're choosing corresponding colored elevations, um, corresponds with what's existing on the property. Um, and then we are also using our landscaping uh, to screen the south side, which would be the visible side from the road um, if at all visible, um, we are using landscaping to screen that side of the building um, for year-round coverage. I think that covers it. Great. Well, I think everyone's concern is with such a nice looking new building down there. We're not detracting from that at all, uh, mm -hmm. but it looks as if you're a ways back on the property. You are doing some landscaping on that uh, south side. That's correct. Any other comments or concerns from the board? Move for approval as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, Steve, if you could read the roll for a voice vote, please. Sounds good. Joe Clark. Aye. Marcus Savaglio. Aye. Jerry Jones. Aye. Richard Lindy. And Pam Langen. Aye. Okay, looks as if that passes. Great. Awesome. Thank you Thanks, very much. Guys. Good luck with the project. Thank you. Which brings us to item 3.2, the proposed construction of a new warehouse by Torganol uh, along Barron's Parkway in the city of Sheboygan Business Park. Uh, if that team could come to the podium and uh, introduce yourselves and tell us a little what you're uh, planning out there, please. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Chris Herzog, president of ACE Building Service, the design build general contractor for the Torganol project. And I would be happy to answer any questions you have um, about the exterior appearance and I'll defer any business or operational related questions to uh, Tom. Oh. 
So uh, the building itself is uh, 67,500 square feet. Um, it is phase one of a planned multi-phase project on the parcel. Uh, the building itself will be used uh, primarily for the storage and distribution of raw materials for Torganol. Um, this construction project is directly related to their increased volume year over year. Um, every time we, we come before you, we sort of have that same comment, but their, their growth has just been uh, unreal. So um, this is the next, next chapter in, in their story. Um, the building itself is a, a pre-engineered steel construction. We've chosen to incorporate different um, metal panel colors and profiles, as well as some aluminum storefront glass, both uh, to provide natural light into the space and provide a little bit of an aesthetic um, value to the outside of the building as well. The colors and the color scheme that we chose for this project actually tie into the project that was just recently completed on uh, their Taylor Drive facility. Um, I did bring pictures along today if you would like to see what that looked like actually finished. Um, but the, the brick sample, the metal colors, um, the aluminum storefront frame colors would all match that. And the, the end goal there is to sort of create a, a brand for the exterior of, of their structure. Uh, right now they, they currently have three different facilities all located over in the business park. Um, from a site perspective, um, we did our very best to uh, ensure that this was a balanced site so we don't propose to haul off nor import a lot of material, um, whether that be uh, topsoil or fill material. And uh, we chose a building elevation height that would best set us up for that as well as um, be suitable for use between the two different facilities. So on the site plan that you're seeing in front of you right now, on the far right hand side of the screen, you can see the outline of an existing building. That is uh, Torganol's facility that's located on Tower Drive. They purchased the Barron's Parkway property uh, not that long ago, and their intent in developing this property is actually to be able to traverse between the Tower Drive facility and the Barron's Parkway facility without having to actually enter the city street. Um, they're gonna do that by way of a, well, we're actually will be crossing the drainage easement that's currently there. Um, the information that was, was submitted <coughs> included an easement to actually go within the current drainage easement. And this was worked out between Ryan Sazma and the city attorney on, on how, to, how to traverse that. Um, so it would include that um, we'll be placing uh, some drainage piping in the, the flow line or bottom of that drainage easement so that we don't impede any water flow. And then building sort of an earthen bridge over the top of it. And this way, Torganol staff can go over the top of that either with forklift traffic, truck traffic, semi-traffic, what have you, and again, not have to enter public way or public right of way to, to get from one facility to the next. Um, the site itself, uh, stormwater plan will uh, incorporate, um, there, you, you're gonna not see a, uh, a stormwater management pond on the site. We do not require one with the city's uh, regional pond intact, but all wall stormwater will be diverted to that, that pond. Uh, downspouts on the building will be plumbed underground um, so we don't create surface erosion or surface water runoff from the building facility itself. And I'm not sure if there's anything else that really jumps out as a, as a highlight. It's, it's a relatively straightforward building um, in its use. But if there are any other questions, I'm happy to answer. I think it is a pretty big building. And some of the concerns, I think the city forwarded some questions to you as to possible options to kind of break down the scale a little more. I've had a chance to review those and your comments back on what you are or are not adopting from those suggestions. So um, we sat down and discussed those with, with the Torganol team. Um, 
and it was it was their desire to propose the the facility as it is presented today for your consideration and see if we could start that conversation there. I guess if I could add on that note. Hi, I'm Tom Testwe Jr., president of the company Torganal. Um, with our first purchase in the city of Sheboygan, that was 4617 South Taylor, uh, that was formerly the Illumeral Specialty Company. Um, we recently did the office edition that Chris mentioned, and at the end of this project, we really want uh, all three buildings, the Taylor Drive, Tower Drive, and Barron's Parkway Drive to have a very similar look. Uh, so that's what we're doing with the panel. I know there was an idea brought up about putting a stripe around the entire building. We did do a stripe above the uh, shipping docks, uh, but you know we really thought that between the glass and the different colors and different panels, um, you know that it's it's hopefully going to be an attractive looking building and blend in with the the t tower drive building which was was kind of known as the weaver warehouse um, i understand they're not the most attractive looking buildings but um, it's going to serve our purpose you know, very nicely uh, certainly if you know if there's something uh, with the paint colors it's more about for us, all three buildings, we want the signage and, and the look and the feel, you know, to be consistent. Uh, and I don't think that that red that's shown on the on the screen really captures it. It's probably more of a like a rust. Yeah, it's, it's just meant to, to give the two uh, tones a little a little pop at the entranceway. You know, I think the other comment we had in early stages in talking with Steve was about the use of um, precast uh, tip-up construction. And uh, you know, it's an interesting idea. Um, I'm just a real big fan of these Butler buildings. Um, we had it out in Sheboygan Falls and uh, we love the way that the water flows off and uh, are actually it, the way that it retains its temperature. Um, I'm sure those are very nice buildings and I know costs are getting closer. Uh, it's just our experience that uh, we put walls up. We don't have heavy equipment that we're put mounting from the roof. Um, so, you know, some of it's maybe more uh, cost driven, uh, but I don't know if that answered the question. But, you know, at this point, uh, I, we can certainly put a stripe there. Uh, I just think that it's going to look better without it. I think one of the other specific questions had to do with downspouts, that there are. 38 or so downspouts. I'm just curious how those tie in to what's being shown. Sure, so the downspouts, um, they're, they're really not shown on the rendering that you're seeing because essentially when you're standing far enough away from the building as, as depicted in the rendering, you won't see the downspouts. Uh, they will be color matching to the wall panel, so they will essentially disappear. The only area that you may see um, the bottom of a downspout would be in the area of the brick wainscot because we have to come away from the building slightly just to traverse past the stone sill. Um, they will again all be uh, direct buried underground. Um, so there will be no <clears throat> spillways, uh, riprap rock or any splash pads or anything like that. But they are all along that north elevation. That's correct. This is a single slope visible. building. Uh, the intent with that is future expansions. We would match the high elevation or the high eave of this building with the high eave of any future expansion so that uh, the second phase would make this a double sloped building and the downspouts from that next phase would then be on the south side. I think especially with the thought for this being expanded in the future and getting even bigger, things that uh, help to break down the mass I think would be good. I think that the start you've got with the different colors is nice, but it, it's feeling to me fairly segmented, something to kind of tie the whole building back together in addition to just the, the clear stories that start to sort of indicate a band running through the building. Um, I think something along those lines would help. Don't know exactly what it would be. Um, just seems to be a lot of 
uninterrupted wall panel other than those clear story windows. Other thoughts from the board, comments? Dick? Mm -hmm. on this thing? Can yes. You, hear, you can hear me. Yep. Uh, I'm just wondering if there's anything on the roof that we should be aware of. Uh, there will not be any uh, roof-mounted HVAC units or anything like that. Uh, any mechanical equipment would be contained within the envelope of the structure. Um, but the only thing that you would see might be a vent stack um, for mechanical okay. venting. Okay, thank you. Which one? Yeah. Can we, can we be able to put the rendering back on, please? Yep, thank you. The different colors uh, break, it, the, th the thought with the different colors is, is breaking up the large expanse as you have suggested. Um, we would intend on keeping in tune with that uh, color palette as we would expand. Um, in looking at, at other types of contemporary big box construction, we'll call it, I mean, driving down between Milwaukee and Chicago, we get into U-line buildings and Amazon warehousing and, and that sort of thing. And um, I guess it, it definitely is in in the eye of the beholder and it comes down to one's opinion. Ours, ours was hopeful that, uh, that we would see the attempt at, at breaking up that large expanse, expanse rather than having one monotone color around the building with no windows and anything like that because there, there's, you know, there's not a, a, a building code requirement for us to introduce that natural light. Um, it was, I guess, our, our attempt at, at trying, to, trying to spice up the outside of the building a bit, create a little bit of visual interest and yet keep the, the costs of the project um, appropriate for what, what Torganal is hoping. As everyone stares intently at the renderings. I'm trying to count, are there three, do other than the shipping docks, are there three doors that south Elevation has one door. Is that south elevation and west has one door? Are we That's talking personnel doors? Yes. Uh, yes, okay. that'd be correct. So there's actually two on the west elevation. One would be the entrance to the small mm -hmm. office area in the building. One would be required by code to a fire pump room. Um, and then looping around to the south side of the building, there's a personnel door, um, one on the north side, and I think there's is there one extra on the west side as well? So yeah, there's, there's three total on the west elevation. Those doors would also be painted to match the wall panel. Mm -hmm. Jerry? So, so Joe, were you talking more vertical? You're looking for something more vertical to break it up instead of horizontal? Or? That's a great question, Jerry. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think they've started to break things down vertically mm -hmm. fairly well, and I think what I'm seeing now is that those vertical breaks are kind of disjointed, mm -hmm. and that something else to tie them back together better. Um, like I said they've fairly, got a fairly high eave height, especially that that center tan panel that just runs from grade all the way up to the the eave with just the uh, clear story in it, and that's a big section of wall. Um, and I like the pop of color at the corner and that we've got that picked up again at the loading dock. Um, just something to start to weave together all those vertical pieces. Uh, a trim band or something that would tie them together horizontally. Uh, you know, architecturally, base middle cap is always a good place to start. Um, you know, what are the panel heights? Are the, is there a material change or more than one full panel anyway, so there's a break that's gonna happen naturally in those walls? So the wall panels that would, uh, that would be for the, the main building envelope mm -hmm. will all be one, one piece. Single panel? Correct. What's the height? What's the height? Uh, 
Um, Eve height on the low side is 27, 28, 28, and the high side is 31 foot nine. There's a slight possibility on the high eave or the high high side of the building that that wall panel is broken up into two expanses. It quite honestly it comes down to final engineering at the with the building manufacturer. We can handle the in installation of panels that are one piece for that situation. I guess I can see your point on some of the continuation throughout the building. The um, the part I struggle with, maybe I'm just not as attuned to architecture as the rest of you guys. I, I, I see the band. I love the windows. I think the windows add a lot to the building. Um, but that single band at the loading dock just kind of stands out for me. Um, and I'm trying to picture in my mind the band going all the way around the building, and that's just not happening in my head. So uh, I can see where we're trying to tie that to the entryway and the other building. Um, but doing something vertically, I, I can see where you're going. I'm just not sure what we can add in there to enhance it. Uh, overall, I mean, I think they're trying to accomplish something that's functional here, and I think it's going to work for them. So if we have an idea, I think we can give them, it would help. But I, I'm just trying to envision something vertically going around the building to tie that together, and I'm, I can't picture it in my mind. Yeah, those are all great comments, Jerry. I, and yeah, just to run a, a horizontal band to carry that red the whole way around is probably a little too much of a racing stripe. <laughs> um, yeah, but does it does it have elements of that that get carried through sort of at the corners or carrying from the the main red corner and of eroding out to to make more of an implied connection around? So I I don't know what the solution is. It just seems like something uh, the the one with the uh, loading dock if I can sh share oh, okay. this with you actually not on the oh. <laughs> but it's Thanks, it will be 360 by 375 square feet so this is the phase one I don't think we have enough copies we can share. share but this will show you Barron's Parkway so And that's where we have a little bit of brick and glass and awning. Um, and then there is a, a berm that uh, was added to cover. And it's not a big berm, but it's a berm to yeah. cover the docks because the docks are technically facing the Barron's Parkway. So it's a little yeah, tricky to understand the orientation of that, really of that piece of land. Like the, the, the other thing, just so everybody is, is looking at the rendering and the color all the same way. The red panel mm -hmm. is an accent metal wall panel. It's a completely different corrugation as the main building colors. And it's also run perpendicular to the building color. So you, we are creating some dimension with that, um, not only just in color, but in you know, physical dimension, sight lines that you'll have, shadowing, et cetera. So the loading dock, if I'm looking at the, the one here, is going to be here? That's correct. correct. Okay. So Joe, I think the biggest one, it seems like you have some heartburn with, for lack of a better phrase, is that long expanse of gray, uh, for lack of a better color. Is that the one? Yes. Um, Marcus said. Oh, sorry, Mark, just go ahead. So uh, I've seen us, I, I'm not an architect, so I'm just kind of also here. Um, <laughs> so what if, what if it's not a horizontal thing that brings it together, but more of a breaking up of that long tannish panel with more gray coming off of the rust colored corner, uh, kind of breaking that up a little bit more? I, I'm not using great words here. I'm using <laughs> normal people words. <laughs> I, I think like, any of those yeah. could be an option. Um, breaking it up in some way, they said, I'm not sure what it is. Maybe Dick has the answer? Well, 
have a suggestion. One more time. Uh, if we would duplicate the pattern that's found on the uh, loading dock side, that width and height and the red strip on the south side, it would give uh, expression that would be a continuation of the concept that Torganol has. And I, I rather like their straightforward uh, design. I thought it was quite stri striking. Um, and I like the fact that they haven't shown the south side on the colored at elevation, elevations. But if they could duplicate that same pattern on the south side, I think that would make me think that they have uh, carried their idea of the um, pattern of colors and uh, containment that they have expressed here being solid blocks as opposed to a string would make some sense. So I'm, I'm suggesting that's one good possibility that they could consider and that would add, I don't think it would add a lot of money to the project, but it would be something significant. I just wanted to comment that I was there when Don Peterson started this organization back 70 years ago or whenever it was, and he was a friend of mine. And, and then after that, uh, Daryl Bell took over and uh, it has, this company has stuck with Sheboygan and I like that and I hope that it will continue to grow. Steve. Um, I don't know, Chris and Tom, if you guys wanted to mention this, but one of the reasons for that south end the way it is right now is the anticipation is to build another 67,000 square feet. So I think that's why they left that is, as is at this point in time. But maybe Chris and Tom, I know we kind of talked in terms of materials and when that's happening, maybe you guys could talk to the potential of when that we could see you next as far as expansion. Because I know I thought there in our discussions it was like, man, we'd like to do it all at one time, but <laughs> and I don't know yeah, if we, that's years we, from now. We talked about our, next our year. concern. We need to be in this building in January, right? So we're moving at a really quick pace, right? And uh, I don't think our contractor has the capacity to take on the whole project and get us in by the end right. of January. Yep. Uh, is where this is a manageable yes. uh, uh, portion, and also uh, Chris had mentioned that we might be well served waiting a little bit because the steel prices are so high sure. right now. So if we do the second phase, uh, and from a risk management standpoint, you know, the second phase could be maybe next year or the year after. Right. Uh, so that, that's really why. But um, I mean, these ideas are, I think we can certainly uh, figure something out on, you know, whether it's the panel or some color uh, to break things up. Um, I just don't know the process. You know, if we go back and, you know, propose a couple more things. Um, I don't know that that's going to slow our, I shouldn't speak for you, is that going to slow our, our building down? We're kind of in queue is what I understand. Um, but I, I think it's, it sounds like we're pretty close if we showed some other ideas on paper. Um, I appreciate, Jerry, what you had to say because I was thinking about KFC chicken with a red stripe around the whole building. <laughs> That's you the know, and I understand, yeah. I understand it, it, it is, it's, it's not the most attractive building, but at the same time, we're in an industrial park, 375 by 360 foot steel building. These buildings are $60 a square foot, you know, all in. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I, we love glass, we love the natural glass. So that's what we did to try to say, hey, let's, you know, modernize it a little bit. Uh, and then we wanted to try to have the three buildings, you know, with the common paint colors, uh, you know, look look alike. Um, but I'm I'm thinking there's something that that can be done just so it, you know, when you look at the building, you don't just see this big long wall of taupe gray. Um, I guess my my suggestion was Dick was talking about doing to something to the south end of the building right now, and my question, I guess, that I was posing is. You guys are talking about an expansion in Correct. fairly Correct. short order. So where I was yeah. going with it, does does it make sense to put it on this one or the next one that based on our discussions and kind of what you're saying now is likely to happen in the near future? Yeah, yeah, is, yeah. Was my comment. Yeah, and we've done that where actually they'll recycle that end wall, but I think sometimes it's cheaper just to put a new end wall in 
Right. Um, so I, I think too, with the south side being fairly non-visible. Um, from maybe, Tower Drive, you don't see Maybe it. not the place to put that extra money. If we could put the extra money to the, the most visible corner that's going to carry on. Um, Barron's, Barron's is going to be the spot, Barron's yeah. Parkway. So, I, I was wondering, um, I really like that rust color um, coming in. I My thought would be, would it make any sense to expand the rust color, kind of the pop color, to make the gray area not look quite as long? If you could extend the rust color on the corners, I mean, you've still got a 67,000 square foot building, but it sure. might not appear as long. I really like that pop of color. And I yeah. think if you had a little bit more of that, um, you know, and I don't know how that affects your signage or anything, but um, I, I really, to me, that's the thing that catches my eye with building. I'm, I'm wondering if we go like down where it's not to the window, but closer to the window. All right. And then move everything down further. Mm -hmm. And maybe even carry that the darker gray a little longer mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. cut down on the lighter gray color. Mm -hmm. Is that a motion? Maybe match it with the corner. You know, like the <laughs> section, make it smaller. <laughs> Get a second. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, Tom, one, it one sounded as if from, we from your time right. frame uh, standpoint to look at some additional options and come back again and to our next meeting in a couple of weeks wouldn't disrupt you hugely? Can, I know, I know one of the things that we talked about was you guys were getting ready to go. I know one of the things that they had talked to me about was hoping to get some type of approval potentially with maybe going back and forth from a staffing perspective because I thought you had said, hey, we're trying to move things along and I didn't know whether or not that's something we've done in the past. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, you know, but I know that was a discussion I had with these gentlemen. Chris, the the approval that you need to keep moving, I, I don't think anyone's had a concern with the basic footprint and the layout nope. and the roof slopes of the building. Mm -hmm. It's really more of the facade treatment. Um, if there's a, an approval from the board that the basic massing is fine, uh, we like the windows, it's just what do you do for that final treatment for the panels and color spacing? Mm -hmm. um, it, does that keep you rolling and not hold things up? Yeah, that, that'll keep things moving because those things are, are really superficial in nature when it comes down to a state plan approval perspective. Mm -hmm. And really that is the, that's the critical path right now mm -hmm. at this point is um, we have plans that are going to be submitted in a matter of days. And um, from that we will use that to build our construction timeline. And as, as Tom mentioned, we have a, a rather short timeline that we have to get this um, turned over and to them to use. So. That would be, yeah. that would be adequate, definitely. And Joe, I think in the past we've done that on a staff level, um, because as long as it's in the concept area of what we're discussing and nothing totally obtuse from that, Steve would come back to us and say, "Hey, wait a minute, they've changed the entire thing." But I'm I'm okay with doing it at the staff level. I will say I will add in, with the caveat that we're talking about wall colors. And we're talking about the expanse of the accent panel. Things like additional, that, anything that would, that would uh, affect the structural uh, design of the building, additional windows, no. uh, additional masonry, masonry that would extend above the current elevation that it's at right now will definitely change things. Yeah, I, I don't think we were suggesting. Stone okay, piers no. between each window. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, how does the rest of the board feel about uh, an approval with modifications coming back just at a staff level? Are you mm -hmm. comfortable enough with that, or would the entire board like to see the next go around with those facade updates? I prefer the first option you just mentioned. Perfect. Want to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve oh, yes. subject to staff final review of the exterior colors. Second. We have a motion and a second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Is everyone clear on that, Steve? The only thing is, is if there was any questions or things like that, like amongst us, if we didn't get it, then I'd bring it back. Sure. You know, but other than that, we can try to get it done. And how, just so 
we, we understand and maybe you need to finish your, your motion and have a vote. My question would just be how do we navigate through that process through email, personal meeting? Yeah. Yep. Okay. You and I will just stay together and just okay. send renderings. Sounds good. And elevations. Perfect. Any additional discussion? Steve? And then and then um, <laughs> once I agreed to it, you would submit the final uh, rent elevation of what was agreed upon. Okay. Super. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve, if you could please read the rolls. Joe Clark. Aye. Marcus Savaglio. Aye. Jerry Jones. Aye. Richard Lindy. Aye. And Pam Langen. Aye. That sounds like an approval. Thank Good you very much. Appreciate your willingness to, to work with the city uh, on your long-term commitment here. Much appreciated, and we like to see this sort of development moving forward. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for all your support. Thank you. And then we'll see you tomorrow, too. Oh, yep. Yep. Thank you. Part two. Any other items that the board is wanting to bring up? Oh, no. Steve, did we need to be voting on membership at any point? Did we do? We did that already. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, so we will have a meeting on June 28th. Super. All right. With that, let's just do a voice vote to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Sounds like we're adjourned. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thanks, Joe. It's going to now. Yeah, eh? that's for sure. I left my car windows open earlier. So my seat was.